What's up? Hello and welcome to the New Age Geek Channels. If you're new here, we build an inclusive space for people of all walks of life through the power of friendship, magic, and tabletop role-playing games. Tonight we have Forging Fate, the D&D... Tonight we have Forging Fate, the sober D&D campaign set in the critical world of Alexandria, following our adventuring party, the Fists of Fate. And... What's up, Fists? Yeah. What is up? Uh, just a friendly little reminder for everybody in the chat tonight that the New Age Geeks includes more than just us up here on the screen. It, in it includes all of you and relies on your wonderful participation in this community that we are growing together. If you want to become one of the New Age Geeks, you actually can. Just make sure to join our Discord and subscribe to our Twitch and YouTube channels where you will find moderated chats, emotes by one of our favorite geeks, Sarah, Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, and chat rooms with the cast and other members of this growing community. Um, another little friendly reminder that the best way to help us out with the algorithm is engagement. So we'd greatly appreciate if you'd watch the video all the way through, like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that these platforms know to share us with everybody else. Beyond that, we have posts going up on Twitter, on TikTok, and on Instagram. So if you're on those platforms, make sure to give us a follow for more. A geeky goodness. Twitch Prime is free. If you already have Amazon Prime, it awards you a one month subscription to any channel on Twitch. Once per month, you do need to go in and resubscribe to that channel, but it's at no additional cost to you. And just link your accounts and click subscribe with Prime on that channel. If you're feeling charitable, Please subscribe on Twitch and YouTube, perhaps gift subscriptions to others, cheer using bits, donate via PayPal. You can check out our merch shop and subscribe to our Patreon. Lastly, if you wish to become a sponsor for the New Age Geeks, reach out to us directly via our Instagram page to begin those discussions. Speaking of sponsors, if you enjoy the music we have going on here on Forging Faith, we highly recommend checking out the Songcraft bot. Songcraft bot allows you to play open source community selected music and soundscape types directly from your Discord server with just a few clicks. Whether you're playing with friends or streaming on Twitch, you can use the audio stress free. With their pro level subscription, you get their playlist builder, shareable playlist codes, access to 40 plus music genres and 20 plus soundscape types, global genre selections, and two premium Discord servers, all for just 10 bucks a month. But by using our referral code NAG, that's N A G, it gets you $2 off your subscription for the first three months. All you need to do to get started is invite the Songcraft bot of your choosing to your server, then just hit play and let Songcraft take care of the rest. And uh, the Crit Award season is open till the end of the month. Uh, open nominations and there's plenty of geeky creators and players and games that we played on this channel that are all uh, available for nomination. So we would love it if you could check us out and nominate us for any of the Crit Awards. Uh, go to critaward.org and all the instructions are on their page. With that being said, is there anything else I'm missing? Yes, there is. Wednesday, investigation checks back, and we're kicking off another round of Meet the Cast with Hands from Queer and Present Danger. So we're going to dive all into Hands' backstory, learn all about what makes them tick, and how they came to be the wonderful geeky creator they are. So check us out on Wednesday at this channel at 9 p.m. Eastern. What time is that on Western? 6 p.m. 6 Western. There you Pacific go. Pacific time. 8 p.m. Central Standard. Those timetables. <laughs> 7 p.m. All right. Um, that being said, I've got nothing else. You guys got anything? Nope. Yeah. All right. Well, with that like a well-oiled machine. Let's dive into tonight's episode of Forging Fates. And we're back. All right, so picking up where we last left, last left off, the Fists having defeated another set of Inquisitors and recovering the Life Blade as... The previous wielder, Sarah, had been uh, taken out, we'll say, by the Inquisitors that had sought her out and the Fists. The team made their way to the Platinum Dragon's Rest. I think that's right. Um, to 
try and revive Sarah. A ritual ensued in which through Finnick, Clover, and Whisper were able to bring the young girl back to the realm of the living. And a little bit of conflict ensued as she was upset with the way things had progressed and that she had now been stripped of her sword. From there, the rest of the fists made their way up and began to discuss their plans for the following day or two, um, making plans to meet up with Citrin and the Platinum Guard to move to their keep uh, in the northern region of Isildra. And while this was happening, Clover did her best to try and console the young girl, and that didn't go over necessarily the best. Eventually, a Inquisitor made their way into the temple and confronted Finnick specifically, stating that uh, someone was looking for her and that it was best if her and the rest of the fists came along quietly. Finnick agreed to this plan, was placed in irons and brought outside, while Whisper and Gormrog also surrendered themselves and were brought out as well, uh, and accompanied by members of the Dawn Riders. The military religious order that is the uh, growing spot, we'll say, of Finnick, um, having formerly been a member. Um, from there, uh, Tristan, seeing the arrest happening, went down to Clover, and the pair of them made, tried to make an escape um, with Sarah, um, getting upset that they were trying to console her. Uh, and from there, a chase would ensue through the, the rest of the temple, eventually making its way into an alley. But the members of the Dawn Riders seem to have an un, uncanny ability to track them. As they hid, they were quickly found by the group chasing them and thrown in irons as well. Eventually, the four remaining fists were brought back together. Uh, Tristan uh, let his anger get the best of him and eventually was knocked out for his troubles as they were brought to a small uh, jail-like area where they were locked in separate cages and the old man that had approached them earlier spying on their ship revealed himself to be uh, one of the high-ranking members in the Inquisition, dropping his illusion and eventually removing these lug-like worms from the bodies of the fists, seemingly having been planted there, planted there during the battle with the other Inquisitors. Plant my fist in his face. Bitches. Disgusting. Um, just a point of order. Your property has been removed from you in the cells. Um, and it Damn. is. Obviously, they're not going to leave you in the cells with all your stuff. Why not? Or. or. What's, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> you know what, Joe? No, my you staff didn't say of that. teleportation. <laughs> Damn it. You didn't say that. Um, Funny thing to just. Do they check everywhere? <laughs> If you have things hidden, um, that's fine. We can have that discussion, but... Well, I'm knocked out, so I wouldn't even know. Right. Um... <laughs> Roll a constitution save. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. But while, while the four remaining fists were being imprisoned, Finnick was brought to her old home, where she was presented in front of her mother. Um, and for the interactions with her mother... Um, just this is going to be a little heads up. There will be a trigger warning for gaslighting. 
Um, we will display it on screen when when she's out there, but um, a lot of gaslighting ensued where she was trying telling you that your childhood was not as you, how you remember it. Whether she's lying or not, you're unsure. Um, <laughs> and mm-hmm. the uh, eventually through much heated discussion, we'll say, eventually Finnick went back up to her childhood room and slipped into a stress-induced temporary madness. Mental breakdown. Yeah, mental breakdown. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. Um, <laughs> where temporary madness. eventually she sunk down to the floor and fell asleep. So, picking up from there, we are going to switch to the four remaining fists. As, remaining? Yep, you're gone now. You're no more. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Alright, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Roll 3d6, drop the lowest real quick. Uh, six, six times. 4d6, yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, Just nerf your stats. Shit. <laughs> Real quick for the chat, if all the audio levels are good, just give me a heads up if the music's too loud or whatnot. I'm, I've been adjusting some of the levels for things just to try and find the best audio levels for you guys, so just give me a heads up if there's something off. That being said, um, as the late afternoon is coming, you all are still locked in your individual cells, stripped of your gear, uh, Finnick, you do not have your gear as well, just as a point of reminder. Oh, shit. They, okay. That's in the bag of holding. Everything? Well, I mean, you gave us the bag of holding. Yeah. And you they took your, it off yeah. of me. You put your I still your have armor. Clover's ring of protection. Yes, you still have your rings and all that, but your armor is in the bag of holding. Armor and weapons? Uh, no, I would say you didn't say your weapons specifically, so you, will ha- you would have your no. weapons. That being said, thank you, Jem. I appreciate the call out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You four, as the sun begins to set, the light shining through the bars of your cells to the outer world. Um, The cell area is pretty cold, and as it's getting later in the afternoon, it's you can start to see your breath a little bit. Am I still unconscious? You are still unconscious. Okay. You need a full rest to be conscious again, my friend. Gotcha. Do we still have our clothes and like outerwear? Yeah, you have your clothes, but your gear, like. Like our robes and jackets and whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, like, if you have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Except for, like, any, like, obviously magical tunics, they, those would have been taken from. I don't know what obviously means. Yeah, when um, they've taken away my brand new cloak. <laughs> it's the cloak like, of. Like, What's the cloak of? Action? It has fire resistance, but it makes me look like a poofy owl. I would say they you keep that. What do you have, Clover? I'm sorry. What okay. was your cloak again? I have a cloak of protection, but it just looks like a cloak. Yeah, that's fine. Though you would keep that. It's like navy blue with little like shimmers, but it's not like a magical shimmering. It's just like glitter, like like okay. they dumped glitter. On All right, you you can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but there are approximately four guards in the space with you. Um, just kind of in the area, keeping an eye on you. There's a few other cells there. Um, one of them, as you were kind of glancing around now, you look to see uh, a few other individuals like posted up in it in various states of health and wellness, um, posted up in one of the cells together, and then there's another two that are empty. Um, have they left us alone? So there's guards in the space that they'll definitely be able to mm-hmm. hear you, and you can see them from where you are. But they're they're doing their own things. They're not like s- statically watching you. And I believe that we've been like short resting since Tristan got knocked out, right? 
if you guys want to go ahead and take uh, like this is pretty much right after you guys were put in there and he took the worms off you and essentially stepped away so we're picking up from that point um but if you guys want to take a short rest you can if you want to just kind of get ready to bunk down for the evening that's up to you i have no choice no, let's <laughs> skip all the role play and anything else that might possibly have come up just long rested force cc to be the one doing shit right now it's a joke i don't actually mean that I'll go first because I need to read something. <laughs> hey, Whisper, how you doing? You all right over there? <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm just feeling chaotic. Um, can I make a perception check of some kind or another? Just kind of get the lay of the land. Yeah, and what do you see if there's anything? Go ahead and roll your perception check and tell me what you're looking for. I'm looking for. Um, Indication of layout, indication of um, basically if we were to get out of these cells, then what? Um, like, are there windows that point to. Can I see, like, the sun is setting that way? So this is a empty space next to the building. There's another building there, like. Sure. All right, go ahead and roll. Hallways, etc. Um. I rolled decently average, but perception is plus three, so that is a 14 total. Okay, so look, getting a, a, a bit of a, a look around, you look up to the window, and it, it's high up on the wall, so as you come and look towards it, you see that you're below ground level at this point. Uh, looking out, you see several other stone buildings uh, and you see some of the Dawn Riders outside in their go uh, their uh, armor, their full armor. You see them kind of marching in formation. Um, looking into the rest of the cells, there is the four guards you see there. There is a set of stairs that lead up from where you came from that leads if and as you remember coming in there was uh, a large open space that had several other guards there you remember seeing a a shrine to what's the name of the god Finnick? I'm sorry Pelor Pelor yes you're yeah, there was a shrine to Pelor there. Um, besides that, you didn't get a whole lot of look to the rest of the, like the actual layout. You do know it's a pretty big building, but the cell area you're in is maybe about eight cells in total in this space. There is, is a. Is there anybody? Sorry, good. There is a, a door to the rear space that is closed and has not been opened. And there's also like a small, wider opening where the guards are typically, you know, doing their thing, the four of them, whether it be playing cards or, you know, having a, a bit of food during their watch or sitting down and relaxing. Is there other imprisoned individuals? There are th uh, approximately three other imprisoned individuals in all contained to one cell on the opposite side of you. Uh, and they look in various states of health. Various states of... Health. Hell. <laughs> That's what I heard, and I'm just like, <laughs> uh... Okay. So... Um, is somebody in a cell next to me? Yeah. Um, so from, if you're looking at the cells from left to right, it's going to be sure. Whisper, Gormrog, Clover, oh, Finnick. Difference. I mean, uh, Tristan. Tristan. Oh. oh, we're in different cells. Yes, we're, we're not all in different yeah, cells. Yeah, we're, we're all in individual cells. Um, are they right next to each other? Yeah, in the, you're so, on one side of the wall, yeah. Okay. 
So I will relay everything I'm figuring out to Whisper and Clover since they're on either side of me. Um, and Are you whispering it? Yes. Um, it's just going to be cold facts. There's not going to be any emotion involved. Uh, Whisper, um, you are closest to the four guards, just as a heads up. Cool. I'm going to bother them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, but... Um, when you relay that to me, uh, Whisper's going to whisper back, uh, did Citrin say he was going to help us? Not so many words, but... Like, gonna... to figure it out? Yeah. Hmm. He said he was on our side, essentially. It was more of just a, you know, jerk of the head, but it communicated a lot. Hmm. Hey guards, how long are you going to keep us in here? What is your plan for us? Shut up. That's hard for me. That's a, that's a solid plan. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that things have like quieted down a little bit and settled, uh, Clover's going to kind of realize for the first time that Finnick's not there. So she's going to go right up to Gormrod's cage and be like, where's Finnick? They took her the other way. What other way? Who? We came this way. She went that way. They put her in a car and... Why was she taken separately from us? She went willingly so that they wouldn't kill us. I think this has something to do with her family. I don't know. I... She asked me to trust her and to not make a scene and to go willingly. And this is what I'm trying to do. Because I don't know what else to do right now. Are you all playing a game? Yes. Can I play? No. Do you have any food? No. You took my food. Yes. Are you going to feed us? No. That's mean. Yes. <laughs> what game are you playing? No. <laughs> that's that's a new one. I haven't played that before. Yes. No, I have it. No. <laughs> Can you say anything other than yes or no? Yes. I dare you to. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good at this game. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I got me there. <laughs> So what's the plan, Fis? I'm gonna peek. Or can we see each other through the bars, or just hear yeah, each other? Yeah, the, the bars are open. Like it, it's metal between the cells, so you're able oh, to see okay. touch each other. Oh, it's so not, it's not so walls. walls. No. Yeah, oh, I thought it was walls. Okay. Sorry about that. The the windows outward are they also just bars, or is it glass? It's just bars. So, so it's no like up. far and then there to the outside. Yeah. And we can see the guards then, like, 
through the cages and where they're where, what they're actually doing. Yeah, you can. You have pretty much 360 view of every everywhere on this floor. Okay. All right. That changes things in a good and a bad way. And we can't see our stuff, right? Uh, your stuff is back yes. towards the rest of uh, where the the guards are sitting. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's an equipment chest nearby. <laughs> that was not listed in the things that I, I was apologize. able to see. A lot going on here. Okay. Those bars go to the outside. Mm-hmm. Does Whisper know? I'm just whispering. I'm whispering about Whisper. Because <laughs> um, I don't uh, want the guards to hear me. I told her everything I told you. Uh, I don't know if she can turn into anything that can fly or make its way across whatever surface is. Because we're underground, she- but like... Yeah, I was thinking. I see thing. you. I see you talking, and I, I'm thinking I, you're talking about me because, and I don't, don't say anything, but I point to see to sh- to like with my eyes to show you how close the guards are to my cage. But yeah. <laughs> Maybe if. Uh... Once Tristan wakes up, he makes a distraction or something. I can make a distraction. Uh, yeah, we should wait until Tristan wakes up. Um, she probably gets some rest too. I don't know how everyone's doing. I got sucker punched, um, so that's not my um, I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. But um, if but if Talon goes home and flies away, what should he do afterwards? I'm sure someone would need to take care of him. So he should probably find somebody to do that. Yeah. You can see the wheels turning. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Oh, but you got a good point. I think rest would probably be for the best. Arts, can I have my notebook? No. Please? No. Maple's, uh, oh, fuck. Clover's gonna cast Prestidigitation um, and make the guard who keeps saying just yes and no uh, to make his tongue burn. You're lucky I like spicy food. Fuck. <laughs> nah. It's not spicy. It's just really, really, really <laughs> hot. Like I mean, so is it the same guard saying no, or are they right. going back and forth answering? <laughs> no, it was just one at that time. I, I don't know. Oh, but okay. She she made him say something other than yes or no. So that's that's oh. informative. Um, Clover wins the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're really good at that, Clover. You didn't even have to say anything. <laughs> Um, it's, you know, always been a goal of mine to be imprisoned and get a guard to speak, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I think we should rest a, a little bit. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to uh did i already do this i did never mind i ain't doing sh- sh- short rest you guys taking a short rest or a long rest yeah this one's gonna be out for a long rest no matter what right 
Mm-hmm. Might as well take a long rest, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess we might as well take a long rest because we're not leaving anyone behind. All right. So, as you all bed down for the evening... Settle in. I drew it crafts and leaves. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Just a pile of leaves, just to get comfortable. Okay, so, as you all bed down for the evening, darkness begins to fall. Finnick. Darkness falls across the land. Hmm? Yes. You slowly begin to stir, and find yourself waking up in your room once again. You see... The fireplace that kind of sits across the room from your bed, slowly burning with fire, just flickering in the space, trying to warm it for the evening. You sit up on the floor. You feel the tears kind of streak down from your face. What do you do? I First off, I'm trying to tell if this is a dream. Or not. How would you like to do that? Would that just be like a general like intelligence or maybe insight? Roll an insight check for me. Oh no, roll a <laughs> perception check for me, I'm sorry. Perception? Yeah. Great. I'm so good at that, guys. That's a third. Uh, looking around, you see uh, on the table a few of the uh, old books you used to have in your room kind of laid out on the table. And as you look at the titles, you see the letters kind of shift and rotate, and they're not actually saying words. The letters kind of flip upside down and just it doesn't make it's just jumbles of letters and, and symbols, and you can't really make any sense of it. Mm, I don't like that. Um. Can I try and listen to see if somebody's outside my door? Sure, go ahead and roll another perception check for me. Fuck me. That's a three. Okay. You go over to the door and press your ear against it and listen for a few moments. And no, There's no sounds coming from outside. Nothing that would indicate that there is uh, someone out there waiting for you. And I didn't get a long rest or anything, did I? No. No. Um. You know what? Something I really haven't gotten to utilize. Um, I'm just going to use my divine sense real quick. Okay. I haven't really used that much, have okay. I? You uh, try and focus your divine energy into gazing around and looking into the space to see if there's anything that would cause you harm from the things you're prepared to look against, and you don't sense anything. So are all of the books doing that shifting thing yep. then? Every time you look at something that would have writing on it, you see it the letters kind of shifting and jumbled and they don't look like even letters sometimes they're just like these weird symbols I'm gonna try like I'm gonna grab one of the books or journals whatever it is okay. and I'm going to try to read it sure you open it up and the same thing on every page the symbols are just either either the page is blank or the symbols are jumping Swirling, they're not even letters sometimes. Oh, I hate those. And you said the bed was flickering? No, the fireplace across. Oh, fireplace. The bed, oh. Flickering with a small uh, fire just the, warming the, bed the space. Is flickering and clipping into the floor. <laughs> it's it's bedroom by Bethesda. It, it's a feature, oh not a bug. <laughs> Oh, God. I hate because I don't know if this is real or not. 
It's a real problem. It is a real problem. Because for what I'm about to do, if it's a dream, then I fucking waste it. If it's not, it'll actually be really good. Um, there's, there's just something telling me that nothing was, what I'm seeing is real. Um, so I'm going to go to my door Okay. again. And this time I'm going to, like, I'll unlock it and like slowly open it. And just sort of peek out into the hallway. Okay. As you slowly open the door, you feel a sudden, like, not, it doesn't hit you like a ton of bricks, but you feel it push into the room, this cold air. And you feel it, like, sink into your skin. And as you open the door more, you see nothing but blackness outside. Oh, shit. Now I know what this is. I know what this is. I don't like this. And as... The door so opens. Know what this is? You hear I, I know what faint, this is. I don't like it. You hear the faint of like chains rubbing together. Slowly, like snakes crawling down a stone wall. You hear it moving closer and closer to you. Oh, uh, stress. Oh, stress. Didn't we kill this guy? Shouldn't he be a Lemure right now? Oh, no, it's it's not a chain devil. No? Mm -mm. I'm just going to wait. Welcome home, oh, no. my chosen one. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Um... I don't respond. I'm just listening. As you listen, you, you hear those door, chains yeah. getting closer and closer. And as you kind of look up to the doorframe, you see a few chains, like these hooked barbs on the ends of chains, slowly start to slither in like snakes towards you, towards your face. Mm -hmm. And you see them pull together and start to bind into a form. Into a, like, a form? Yeah. You see it, like, begin to shape like a face. This moving, shifting, chained face. And this mouth kind of opens. Just the chains moving, it almost moves like a mouth. And you see it. Two eyes begin to form in these divots that the, the chains make around. All I can think is the Muppet Christmas Carol where <laughs> the Marley brothers pop in. We're Marley and Marley. Whoa! <laughs> Of course you would know it. <laughs> oh, that makes this situation a whole lot easier to deal with. Focus up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> ah. I'm just waiting for it to say literally anything else because I, I am sitting here stressed, panicked, and confused. Like, again. As you stand there, kind of begins to encroach on your space, forcing you to almost take a few steps back from the doorway. And you see chains from the fire pit begin to move down from the chimney up along the wall, like snakes or ma uh, vines growing outwards and begin to spreading across your room. Welcome home, my chosen one. chosen one from birth you've always been mine rude what are you talking about the reason your parents hated you they saw my touch on you I've given you power. You've also given me trauma. What's your point? <laughs> I, I don't say that. I don't say that. <laughs> oh, this power has also given me lots of problems. 
It was to show you that this world doesn't belong to them. They don't trust you with what you can do. Yo. Who? What are you talking about? The world doesn't belong to them. Um, I just sort of stiffen up a bit. I feel like a chill runs down my spine. Why are you Why is this happening? Why not? Who can decide the way things happen? It or a reason. There are no reasons. I can I try and like wake myself up? How would you like to do that? I use the cantrip shocking grasp on myself. I'm going to say make a wisdom uh, spell casting. Make a spell so casting attack. And- yeah, make a spell casting attack at, at disadvantage. Disadvantage? Well, you're sleeping. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, disadvantage is a 17. Okay, that's your armor class, right? Yeah. Your armor class is less than that, right? My armor class is 11. Yeah. So I would have had to roll so poorly. <laughs> and how would you like to visualize that as as you wake yourself up? Um, It's that whole, like, intense, overwhelming emotions where it's like, I feel like I don't intentionally do it. It's like, the, the static and bits coming off of me as I go to, like, grab, like, my shoulder out of habit. And I sort of <laughs> clear. <laughs> okay. So. Do you want me to roll damage? Uh, how much hit points do you have left? Uh, third, I'm sitting at 35 right now. Oh, you're not going to knock yourself out unconscious with it, so don't worry about it. Um. But as you feel the energy start to pulse towards you, in that sudden moment, you see all these chains collapse in towards you, trying to grab you from leaving the space. But you wake up in a bolt and you're on the floor in your room once more. And now I'm going over to check the books on the desk again. Okay. And as you do that, we're going to take a quick break because I've got to use the bathroom. Oh, goodness. Sorry. We'll be right back. Let me get this one. Yay. Oh, a tense moment. Molly and Molly. Right, we'll be right back. Sorry about that, everyone. We are back. Um, okay, so Phoenix, so you get up and make your way over to the books that were on your table. Uh, as you make your way over to them, um, you see the titles there, titles that you've, books from you've read in your childhood. Um, they're dusty. There's a little bit of a layer of dust on them, as is right. most things in your room, but... But the letters aren't changing. Nope. Okay. That makes me feel a little bit better. Um. Have I gotten any sort of rest yet or no? Uh, you can take a short rest if you'd like. Do it. Um... I have uh, one spell slot left. Okay. So I would like to I would like to cast a sending. Okay. Who are you sending to? Um, I'm going to actually send this to Clover. Uh, okay. Um, I know, I, I guess, because I don't know their current status. Yep. 
but um, I am going to say I'm okay. Just checking in on you guys. Not sure what happened after I left. I'm trying to get you all out. I'm really sorry. Clover, roll a perception check for me at disadvantage. Okay, I also, um, I, I didn't know that this was going to be relevant until our turn, so maybe you still want us to wait, but I was going to ask Whisper and Gormrog if we were still taking watch even though we were in prison, but um, anyway. Perception at disadvantage. I got a 15 and a 19 on the die, so okay. my perception lowest one is going to be a 26. All right, so this wakes you up from, from sleep. Whether you guys decide to take break naps or not, either way, you will you hear the message. You're welcome. Uh, am I able to respond? Yeah. 25 words. Okay, I'm going to say, in jail, pretty beat up, where are you? I can't respond. That was my so, last spell stop. As you send that message out, you receive nothing but silence for the rest of the evening. That's fine. At least you know that I'm alive, so that's something. Yeah. What about everybody else? <laughs> well, I said we're pretty beat up. <laughs> yeah, we're. Plural. All right. You're good. Finnick, what would you like to do now? Um, again, I'm going to listen to see if there's anybody outside my door or if there's people like walking past it. I'm just trying to see, like, I guess how tight security is around here. Okay, roll a perception check for me. Okay. Oh, guidance. Um. <laughs> uh, for a total of 17. Okay. As you kind of press your ear to the door, um, with the 17, you hear pretty well. Um, you get the sense that you're hearing out, outside of this room pretty well. Uh, you hear the faint shifting of armor almost directly next to your door. Um, you hear the, the faint sound of armored footsteps walking through the halls at various distances from where you are. Um, but that's pretty much what, all you would hear at this in where you are right now. And no... Uh... No talking or anything? No, not currently. Okay. Um, I guess for the time being, I am going to sit next to the door and trying to, like, time out when people walk past. And I guess, like, if I can tell if there's any, like, shift change that happens. So I'm assuming someone's standing post right outside my door. Okay. I'll say you sit for... How many hours do you want to sit? As long as I need to. <laughs> okay. So I will say, from where you are right now, about half hour to 45 minutes tick by. Um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of um, routine to the footsteps. But as that 45 minutes ticks by, you hear the faint conversation between two voices. And... Uh, as they say, essentially that, you know, I'm taking over for your shift and and they uh, mm. the, that person seems to leave and there's another person that takes watch at your door. Okay. Okay. I'm basically going to sit next to my door until I fall asleep again. Okay. For a long rest. All right. So you drift off back to sleep. Um, I will say, as you kind of sit, are sitting there now, uh, slowly drifting off to sleep and kind of sinking into your body, you feel this faint, like, almost itch or... Uh-oh. 
feel this faint almost itch or like a an irritation on your uh, chest. Mm. And you kind of pull. Eventually it gets so intense you kind of pull the, the shirt back and look and you see several, almost like it was burned into your skin, these chain links. Oh no. Okay. That wrap up onto your shoulder. Just a few. And you kind of sit there. Okay. Eventually you drift off to sleep as that faint echo of chains rattling is the last thing you hear. Okay. The rest of you, what uh, what's the plan for your long rest? Is anyone going to take watch, or...? Do you guys want to? I hadn't thought of it, but since you brought it up, uh, I think that's a good idea. Um if no other reason than to make sure we're not being fucked with. Yeah. I like it. All right. Um, I'll take first draft watch. Okay, so Clover, you're going to go first. That would be when you got the message. Just a heads up. Sounds, sounds good. Okay. So. Do you want right. to just pass it down the line? Clover, me, whisper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say, Clover, as your f uh, shift of standing guard, make sure that you guys aren't uh, separated or whatnot, uh, ticks through. You receive a message from Finnick, and you respond, as we've already discussed. Um, did you want to do anything in that moment, or did you want to just wait till the next shift? I'm going to try to talk to the guard. How many guards are up in the middle of the night? All of them still, all four of them? So currently, um, as you guys have all started to lay down, uh, two of the guards have disappeared for the evening. Uh, all four guards have sh changed out at this point. Two new guards have come down, though, to replace the four. So it's just the two guards that are watching in the evening. So how'd you guys get into this? see both of them just kind of turn their attention towards you before they, they turn their attention back towards each other and sit down at the small table towards the, the rear of the cell area and are just playing cards. Is it like other. a family? Is it like a family business? <laughs> I don't really know much about this area. It's kind of actually freaky being in jail somewhere you've never been before. Have you guys ever been in jail before? I don't respond to you. Um, I will say, as the first hour or so ticks by, you start to hear the sound of footsteps making their way down the stairs once more. Uh, well, let's see. Who's awake out of... Oh, there's one of you. And uh, as you kind of look towards the sound of the voice in the dark, you see the... Uh, uh, Darius Blackwood, again, the... Grand Inquisitor of the Inquisition. You see him make his way back down to you. That's not the alley guy, is it? Yeah. That's the, that is the alley guy? The one you surprised? Yeah. The one that was an old man? Yeah. What? Norville. You see Norville. When he comes down, I'm, uh, when he comes down, I'm gonna say, should have killed you when I had the chance. You certainly could have tried there, young lady. Shall we have a conversation? You can talk. God and kind of waves over, and uh, one of the guards stands up and makes his way over. Um, stick your hand to the bar, ma'am. Wait, why? I'm going to bring you to a room where we can have a conversation. I mean, there's n really no it. point in resisting. I could easily have you dispatched here and now. Fine. Just stick your hands out through the opening. Your hands are clasped once more before the bars, before the, the cell is opened once more. 
and you are led back towards the room at the rear of the this area. The door is open for you. You are shoved in to the pitch black room. No. Hey. There's no need to be rude. I apologize for my man. And shortly after, Darius makes his way in with a candle. That he, and as he enters in, you see now that there's a pretty plain table, though it's heavily made. Uh, doesn't look like it can easily be flipped. As well as two chairs. Well, would you please take a seat, um, Clover? Yeah. Okay, I sit. He goes ahead and sits across from you as the door is shut behind him, leaving just you two alone in the room. So, it is my business to know things that are happening in my city. I also uh, enjoy a great deal of learning about the people that have caused me concern. So, let's start from the beginning. What dis made you decide to leave the farm? Excuse me? The farm you grew up on, what made you decide to leave? Where'd you get that information? I have my ways. I mean, quite frankly, I think it's pretty obvious. You see many of my kind around? No. Well, I'm wondering what brought you here, oh. then. Like, sp like, like, this town? Yeah. Man... I just hopped on an airship with my friends. It didn't really matter where we were going. I have no business here. Well, you seem to be involving yourself in quite a bit. I mean, I'm going to defend the people who I'm with. But I'm not seeking out trouble. <sighs> well, how can we come to an amenable conclusion with all of this? What do you want with us? Well, you've killed five of my Inquisitors now. And each time they attacked us first. Well... I mean, not to be rude, but maybe you, you should get stronger Inquisitors. Well, that's a fair argument. Would you care to become one? want to spend my life going around intimidating people not people who haven't hurt me first well perhaps you can help bring a little honor let's say to the inquisition i can't make any decisions without talking to my friends first we are a team well i feel like your options are growing quite limited miss clover I mean, we can easily just remove the threat that you all pose. Mistress Finnick is back where she belongs. The rest of you are collateral, we'll say. How do you plan on escaping this prison? I would Love to know. What's your plans? I, was, I wasn't planning on escaping. Um, you guys have bloodied me. I haven't slept. I haven't eaten. I don't really have the brain power right now to plan an escape. I don't have any of my weapons. Um, so, I, so maybe you're expecting a little bit more of me than I'm capable of, which is really nice of you. Roll a but as of deception right now, or persuasion check. You don't, don't tell me which. Sixteen. All right, I rolled a natural twenty. Ah, good for you. <laughs> so, what, are you lying to him? 
I'm not lying to him. Okay. I am literally bleeding. I'm so hungry. I'm tired. And I don't know how to escape by myself. Okay. Um, so, um, Miss Clover, how about this? Let me get you a little food. I understand you're a vegetarian. Why do you know that? It's my business now. Oh, because you bugged us. Um, let me get you a little food and we can continue this discussion. We'll see how, how you feel. How does that sound, Clover? Hexcom. Sounds like I should probably eat some food. Please bring in something for the young lady. A few moments later. If you poison it, we'll figure out a way to hurt you. Poisoning you is so below what I'm capable of, I wouldn't even dare to insult your intelligence. Uh, a few moments later, some okay. vegetable stew is brought in uh, alongside with a pretty healthy sized chunk of bread and um, a bit of like raw carrots and, and celery, as well as uh, a small bowl of fruit, berries and, and the like, cut up plum. I'll start eating. So you know a lot about me. Tell me something about yourself. Well, we seek to bring order to all things that the city has. Ever since this primordial decided to be brought in with Vecna's ascension several years ago, we've found it necessary to root out some of the more, uh, shall we say, unsavory deities that roam this world can't let them growing here with such a easy target amongst us what about you what made you the leader of this oh i'm not the leader i'm that honor belongs to the High Inquisitor, Miss uh, Valeria Dawnbreaker. Okay. So what do you want? Um, well, first off, where is the blade? I wish I had one, but I don't. I've never had one of those special blades. Who does? As much as I've had one. Was that Sarah girl? I don't know what happened to it after she died. I don't appreciate being lied to, dear. I mean, I'm more than happy to do this the hard way, but I figured I'd give the opportunity to be appropriate with the time you may have left none of us have our weapons right now you took them mm. okay oh, I don't know where it is I mean I think I saw a pile of stuff by the door seems like that's where you took all of our stuff I'm going to ask one last time before I have to take things to a, a level you're not going to enjoy Where is the blade? Think hard. I, I've got time. I can wait. Just know this last answer will be the last one you're able to give. You confiscated our weapons. I don't know where you guys put them. But I don't have any weapons on me. And none of my friends do that I saw. See him kind of stand up now. 
and begin to move next to the table. Kind of puts his hand out, rests it on the table. You see his fingers start to unnaturally bend side to side and wriggle before his the shape kind of moves up his arm. You see his whole forearm begin to bulge like there's millions of things just beneath the skin trying to burst their way out. I need you to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, actually, you are making a disadvantage. My lowest roll was a 14 for a 23. You see his arm. Now, the skin rip and peel. As thousands of those similar snake-like worm slugs burst from his skin and begin to envelop your body, pushing over the table, across your hands, up your flesh. You feel with each movement this burning sensation. You take 22 points in necrotic damage. What was the save? 19. You're not blinded or restrained. What? You're not blinded 19, or restrained. So I pass. Right. You still take oh, you still so take damage. Take you still take 22 points in necrotic damage. Oh, why? Because you're it would have been 44. Oh, I have evasion. Okay. All right, so you're using evasion. I just always have evasion. Okay. So, <laughs> As these, as you see the his arm explode into these worms and they're given to make their way over to you, you stand up, evading, just jumping back at the last moment as they try to crawl across your skin. You press yourself up against the back wall now as he stands there looking at you as these worms kind of move across the table and drop down to the floor. And you see his arm begin to reform. Out of the stump, you see worms filling that space before the skin slowly starts to reform around it. Um, I feel like you're better than this. I feel like you can get more, like, different information out of me other than things I don't actually know. Well, that being said, dear, I think it's time. Let's put you back in your cell and see if anyone else has anything to say. Good luck. Gods, doors opened once more, and you're pulled out, or being thrown back in your cell. They allow you the opportunity to put your hands back through the bars to have your uh, handcuffs unlocked, if that's something we'll go along with. No. Okay. Short order, Gormrog. You hear, uh, roll a perception check for me at disadvantage. At disadvantage? Yeah. Already not great. <laughs> uh, total, that's an eight and a six. So, as you're sleeping, you suddenly are jolted awake as... You feel this lar uh, heavy shaft of a polearm slammed into your chest. And you, as you, your eyes kind of open, you see Norville standing there. Now, sans disguise once more. Darius Blackwood. Care to have a discussion, Gormrog? Um, 
It was less a request and more of demand, but I'm trying to be cordial with you. Sure. I... Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, the guards attempt to bind irons on you. Do you resist at all? No. Okay. So you're placed in handcuffed, in handcuffs, and brought to that same room where uh, Clover was. You see uh, a bits of remnants of food left on the table from what you gather to be a previous interrogation. Um, see the bits of slime almost at the corners of the table, but you don't see any anything else that would indicate what had previously happened. Okay. Please have a have a seat, Mr. Gromrog. Oh well. Flame of the Evermore, am I correct? Is that what it's called? Uh River Ma. Like ah, the river mouth Ma. of the river. I apologize. Um <laughs> the title is Everflame, but Everflame. you're well informed. Oh I'm aware. How well informed are you, Gonrog? Uh, the more I learn, the more I realize I know next to nothing. That's understandable. We are always on a quest for knowledge, aren't we? Especially people of your creed. Yeah, the Cobalt Soul. That's right. Well... Cobalt Soul has always been one for information and knowledge, though their worship mm -hmm. here, not always of obvious worship. Uh, sorry, I'm still waking up. I don't follow. Well, ever since her defeat millennia years ago, or at least her injure. Her worship has died down, leaving just you. Blue wearing folk. Oh, you mean Ayun? Yes, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I don't do the whole worship thing. Oh, well, that's probably for the best. So. Why are you here, Gormrog? What has brought you to Vasselheim? Surprised you don't know. Well, I've got my information, but I want to see where you are in your level of honesty. Well... Where to start? So, among the River Maw, um, there are other people. One of them is uh, an orc woman named Sema Yor, and she's on her way to destroy Vasselheim. And why is that your yeah. issue? I think it's all of our issues. Let's not pretend like you're some noble hero, Romrog. Why have you become involved in this plot to destroy Vasselheim? He's already destroyed a decent port of West Run. And I'm trying to stop it from getting any worse than it already is. Why? Because I'm one of the dumbasses that live here. I'd rather not see more people hurt. Why is that an issue for you? It just doesn't seem like you're the type to get involved in something that is this big I'm not 
I'm trying to do what's right. Why? Not what's easy. Why not? Sorry, I'm getting angry. You don't deserve that. You're asking for information. I apologize for that. Why don't you tell me where the blade is that you've recovered from the young girl in the clearing? know where that thing goes it just kind of disappears as per who? there's some magic to it that i don't understand so someone else has bound themselves to it i, I genuinely i'm not sure how it works calm rug i would encourage you to not make this difficult And being as forthright as I can be. What's your armor class? 16. In a, a flash of movement, you feel his fist slam into your face, knocking your chair back to the floor. You take... Uh, seven bludgeoning damage and make a constitution saving throw. That's not great. Ten. As you get slammed back to the floor, you feel your face burn as these small worms are trying to burrow into your skin. You see them push into your flesh and you feel them crawl underneath your skin you are poisoned hmm. you see him kind of stand over you now and kneel down disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks cool 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 well who has the blade now Very well. He goes ahead and wraps his fingers around your throat and with one hand lifts you up and slams you down onto the table. He brings his face close to yours again. My patience is growing thin. holds his hand out over your face just above and you see his skin begin to bulge and wriggle you see his flesh begin to pull apart go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw for me at disadvantage because i'm poisoned oh wait no that's not at disadvantage is it nope that's ability checks and what was it same uh, tackles tackles yeah sorry okay am i Restrained? Technically, you're grappled, but I, I didn't make it an issue for Clover, so I'm not going to make it an issue for you. It's just your hands. Okay. You know what I mean? And this isn't um, something that would necessarily your hands will be the most useful for. All right. That is a dexterity saving throw. Yep. 12 plus 7 is 19. So, in the last moment, as his hand bursts and you see these slug like worms. They're going to fall towards your face. You roll over the side, slamming down onto the floor. Do you see the his hand begin to reform once more? 
Uh, you take 22 points of necrotic damage as a few of the worms latch onto your skin and burn away pieces of your your body as they try and dig their way into your skin. Uh, I'm going to try and swipe them away uh, as soon as I'm rolled over onto the floor. Oh. If you're not going to say anything, maybe whisper will. Why? Why what? Why are you after the sword? It's dangerous. It needs to be contained. It's always the one that Selma Yua has. And if what you say is true, we will take that from her as well. What about the one her husband has? All of them. All of them. And then what? That truly isn't your concern, Gormog. You were offered the chance to have a conversation with me and you decided to not. I was having a conversation and you punched me in the face and then put worms inside of it. You lied to me, Gormog. I and did I not abide a liar. I have yet to lie to you. Goes ahead and moves towards the door and opens it. The two guards make their way in. You make any resistance? Mm. Okay. And short of that dexterity saving throw, I haven't this entire time. Okay. You were brought out, brought back to your cell, shoved inside and uncuffed as long as you don't make any resistances. Whisper? No. Make a uh, perception check at disadvantage. Seventeen. Okay. You are startled awake at the sudden sound of your cell door being pulled open and you see the two guards moving in to pull you up off the ground and uh, attempt to clasp irons around your hand hands. Can I get a long rest? No. This is still just a short rest. Even though two watches happened already? Nope. Two watches didn't happen. This is all during just <sighs> Lower was the only one that was on watch. So I'm still awake on my watch? Yeah. As um, as Gormrog is pulled out, yeah, you would still be awake. Um, did Clover do anything while it's Gormrog? Yeah, I'll, I'll, oh. I'll uh, now that that information's out there, is there anything you would have done on your your watch while Gormrog was being interrogated? Was I still awake? Oh, while he was being interrogated. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do? Well, there's guards. I don't know. I'm going to try to whisper to whisper. Uh... <laughs> um, are there any, like, rocks, stone, sediment, sand kind of deals? Uh, I would say it's pretty... easy enough for you to find a piece of pebble or something you'd like to pull out and throw. Yeah, I'll grab whatever I can find on the ground and just chuck it at her. Okay, I'll say with a 15 perception, we'll just use that for this. Um, it's enough to get you awake, Whisper, while Gormrog is being interrogated. 17 perception, but yeah. Yep, you're right. Uh, 15 was the DC, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you looking rough? Um, I haven't, I don't look any worse than I did before we all fell asleep. Hmm. Um, but you would probably notice Wormrog missing, so I'm going to be, like, taking us in for questioning. We're asking about... Be careful. Be careful. I... 
I mouth, should I go? I think they're gonna take you no matter what. But. Oh. Oh, um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, Are the fine. guards paying attention to us at all? There, one of them is very like, close to the door. The other one's kind of like in that still that the wider space towards the rear, just watching. But I mean, the space where you are, where your cells are, there's no lights over there currently, so it's just the faint flicker. If if anything, whispers the most illuminated out of all of you. So I mean, it's it's kind of hard to tell how much of the uke they can see. Do you want to? Um, when Clover sees Whisper's response to that, um, Clover's gonna be like, "Ow! Ow! Can somebody help me? I think I just got like bit by something." One of the guards kind of makes his way over towards you. Do you think I give a f shit if you were bit by something? It's probably a rat. Can you check me out? No. Can you look at it? No. Can you all kind get rabies? Can your kind spell rabies? Yeah. It turns and starts to walk back towards. Uh, while that happens, um, I wasn't prepared for this, but I am going to first cast invisibility on myself. It's just touch, so I don't have to make any sound. Okay. Um, and while I'm invisible, I'm going to position myself right near the window. Okay. And I believe this is going to make my invisibility go away. Yep. But uh, I'm going to cast Wild Shape and turn into a bat and try to fly out the window. All right. Do you have to roll for that because of your... Uh, I'm level nine now, so let's, let me look at the rules. That well, I mean I your Wild Shape instability. Okay. Yeah, I'm level nine now, so I'm, I'm double checking. I feel like the DC is like super low. If, it, if I still have to roll. I think level 10 is when I'm... Got it. Uh... Yeah, DC is super low, but I will roll. Yeah, okay, I cool. turned you a bat. Awesome. So, as you go invisible, you see that guard that was over there. You see his attention as a fucking body just disappears inside of a cell. He sees the tension turn over there. And uh, he, as the other guards arguing with Clover, hey, uh, where, this one's missing. Think she's using magic. And suddenly you, in the air, turn into this bat, <laughs> begin to fly out of the window. They're escaping. And you hear them start to <laughs> go. And Gormrog, as the door opens, Gormrog is being brought out as you escape through the window. I think that's where we're going to call it for a break. Moth. As <laughs> Whisper escapes <laughs> through the window. I feel like that's a good break point. Yet. <laughs> oh, gee, Willikers, guys. This is so much. I'm actually really happy that Tristan is not conscious because he'd be trying to rip the building down right now. <laughs> I wish you were. That might pose an yeah. issue for the escape, though. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be trying to do everything he could to get through those bars and tear everyone apart. I hope you guys are having fun. It's a tense episode, to say the least. I'm stressed. <laughs> Hella stressed. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to jump to our break. Gross. We're going to jump to our break. We'll be back in a minute. Love you guys.
and we are back. So, Whisper, as you make your way out through the bars, you're instantly brought into the e- cold evening air. Um, you come out, and as you begin to come out, you hear voices inside, and uh, Gormrog and, and Clover, you the two guards are yelling now that uh, someone has escaped, and they're, they're, uh, one of them runs upstairs to start alerting everyone. As Whisper, you hear the voices below as you fly up into the night air. Where are you going? What do I see? So as you make your way out into the open space, you see a large keep up on the mountain, and you are outside of the city now. Um, and you can see Vasselheim in the distance, the lights glowing in the distance. You see this large keep with these red banners in the dark with your, your dark vision. You see these uh, red banners with this sun symbol there that you've seen the, the red guard wearing, uh, the Dawn Riders wearing, rather. And uh, you get the sense that you are somewhere on the grounds of their keep. Um, I go up. And I want to fly towards Vasselheim. Okay. As you're making, or your... is is that way the way closest to the edge of the keep, or is there another way that's closer to the edge of the keep? Yeah, you could fly directly towards Vasselheim. Would be, I mean, the keep is semicircle built into the mountains. There's the the walls that mm-hmm. surround it. Um. So you could fly out over the wall and then make your way to Vasselheim, but flying directly to Vasselheim would be the most direct route. Well, I'm going to fly over the wall. Okay. As you are making your way out over the wall, you see flames making their way, like torches being held out onto the grounds, and you see uh, along the wall, torches start to be lit up, giving illumination to the space. Uh, Just roll a stealth check for me at advantage, I'll say, as you are a fucking Mm -hmm. bat in the night. I'm tiny. I'm a tiny. Yeah. Beast. I'm gonna go. I need to set advantage. Eighteen. Okay. You hear the voices below calling out, trying to find you, um, but you are easily able to make it up high enough and over the wall without anyone noticing you, and you begin your trek southwards towards Vasselheim. Where are you trying to go in Vasselheim? Would I have known where Pike went? Um, so sh- she told you that she was headed towards her uh, temple. I don't know if Whisper would know where that is. That doesn't really seem like information she would have gotten at some point. Do I know what her temple is called? You know she is a worship, uh, worshiper of Sanray. Sanray. Mm-hmm. And you do know that Sanray and Pelor are associated deities. So you would gather her temple is probably somewhere in that area where uh, you know you know that the Pelor area. I would head there towards okay. that area. All right. Still has a bat. Okay. Um... Takes you a bit of time. How long can you maintain your wild shape form? A couple hours. A couple hours. Okay, no worries then. Uh, easy enough. Eventually, you find your way into the uh, area. Uh, the... uh, Eventually, you find your way over into this area of uh, the Braving Grounds, where Cord and uh, Saren Ray's temple are, as well as uh, Pelor's temple. Um, the night is pretty quiet in the city. Um, there's a few torches kind of lit just to maintain a, a semi bit of uh, luminance inside the city. But besides that, there's not much. There's a, a few of the guards of Vasselheim kind of walking around. Mm-hmm. They don't seem to have been alerted to your escape at the in the moment. 
but you are easily able uh, able to traverse anywhere you'd like with no uh, issue at this in this at this moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to f- fly. Do I recognize Saren Ray t- Temple? Roll a religion check for me. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> 14 I'll say your education as as a child you'd have an idea of what Saren Ray's uh, iconography would look like so I will say that mm-hmm. as a bat you do see this uh, smaller temple compared to the others there and uh, you make your way over towards it mm-hmm your are there any lights on? Not so, yet. Okay. There's uh, a few porches in the front. Um, inside, through the windows, these like stained glass windows, you see uh, a faint bit of candlelight from the inside. You gather that's probably the worship area that maintains candles, as most do. But uh, besides that, you see very minimal movement in the area. There's, you know, maybe a few people just kind of making their way home from an inn just kind of walking down the street but no one no one has any sort of elevated uh alertness to their their gate i want to um land in an alley or a dark spot close to the temple okay easy enough you find a nice secluded corner I'm going to drop my bat form, but instantly cast Pass Without a Trace. Okay. As your body grows back into your elven form, the darkness creeps around you, casting you in this shadowy uh, cloak as you sit in the dark alley. You listen around. And then I'm going to try. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you listen around. Um, You hear the faint... um, From where you are, you hear the faint... Breathing and, and shuffling of guards kind of making their way down the street. Nothing, Nothing's really bringing up that alertness level for you just yet. Um, I'm going to go into the temple. Okay. Make your way over. You before, slowly... before I make myself seen, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to like peek out. I'm going to try to still stealth in. All right, roll a stealth check for me. Make sure you add the uh, plus 10. Plus 10, yeah. It's a 29. Okay. <laughs> you slowly make your way over the corner. Those The shadows almost like being pulled along with you as you pull around and the light from the torches almost seem to dim at the uh, as your spell kind of envelops them. You slowly push the door open to the Saren Ray's temple. A little bit light creak as the wood groans open. Inside you see a older uh, human kind of dress- dressed in what you gather to be uh, robes of Saren Ray. And you see him standing there uh, having a conversation with a another set of individuals wearing black high collared shirts gold trim and as you enter in and you begin to hear them you see the pair of them are rather aggressive in their stance to the older man and as you creep in you see one of them reach out and grab the the the, the uh I'm just gonna call him a pastor because I can't think of the fucking word you see him grab the pastor and just open hand slap him across the face and drop him to the floor do you really think you can defy us for so long? Yeah. What are you going to do? What does the room look like? Um, so as you enter in and get a look around, similar to a lot of how a lot of the temples are kind of laid out, there's a room for worship there. There's an altar that they're kind of standing in front of now with a, a, an effigy of Saren Ray. They're made out of... Uh, stone this dark stone and gold kind of accenting the light the the light elements of her her figure um there's 
a set of doors that rest on either side behind it that you get lead to further, like some more of the personal quarters of the temple. And uh, besides that, it's just this large open room with several pews and areas for worship. Uh, I'm going to pull my hood over my hair and my head as much as possible. Okay. And try to slink in the shadows to like a back pew as far away from them as possible. Okay. As with your, I won't make it roll another stealth check, that you hide down in the pews and kind of are able to keep a good view on where they are without revealing yourself too much. You see the other one mm -hmm. kind of reach down and pick up the pastor. Where is your lady of the temple? You see, as he's lifted up, now there's a bit of blood kind of coming from the corner of his mouth where he was struck. Lady Pike has no interest in aligning herself with you lot. You see another the hand wind up and slap him again, and he drops down to the floor. The other one kind of steps up and stomps down onto his face. This can go one of two ways. The easy way or the hard way. And while I'm more than happy to do this the hard way, I'm sure you will not appreciate it as much. Is there anything you'd like to do, Whisper? Mm-mm, staying ahead and sorry, old dude. Okay. Uh, this continues on for another few minutes and uh, roll a perception check for me. Seventeen. Okay. I will say you hear it faintly at first. The faint sound of armor coming from back by the where the effigy is. You hear the faint rattle of armor approaching. You see the door kind of open up. And you see this quite short uh, gnomish woman dressed in this full golden set of armor kind of open her door um I are you looking for me and you see now Pike standing there in her full dawn uh, dawn water armor and you see the two of them turn their attention as the old man flops down to the floor now semi-conscious Me just you see her kind of step out now, moving towards where the pastures laid on the ground. You see her armor beginning to glow as she steps forward. I don't believe you have any further business here, Inquisition. Is this really the route you'd like to take? Lady Pike, it's time for you to make a decision. Either join us, or this is where your life ends. You see her kind of reach her hand up to clutch the symbol of Saren Ray on her chest. As she raises up a hand, you see the light kind of start to form in between her fingers as her palm glows. And in this one explosive burst of light, she shoots forward a beam that just envelops the pair of them. You see their flesh burn and pull away, torching their robes in these explosion of flames as the pair of them are rocked backwards, knocking down to the floor. And she moves over towards the downed pastor and kind of puts a hand on him. You see his flesh begin to heal from the wounds mm -hmm. as the pair of Inquisitors lay there motionless. Um, I will... Realizing that they're motionless, I'm going to, like, peek up from the pew. Her attention it quickly shifts to you as That's this it. sudden movement. <laughs> I came for help. 
Whisper, was it? Yeah. What? Why are... Where is everyone else? Uh, the similar problem that you just had. Um, I just broke out of prison. They've got everybody else. Uh, Finnick got taken somewhere else other than the rest of Fates. But... I, I didn't know where to go. You're the first person I thought of. I could I don't really trust Citrin. Uh, are you are you okay? I'm a little worse for wear. I haven't rested in a long time. Um, but I'm but better off than the rest of them right now. She kind of motions for you to come over to her as mm-hmm. she continues to heal the the pastor on the ground. Also, sorry, sorry, I was going to help you if they left you alone afterwards. Oh, it's it's fine, Whisper. <laughs> they, they've been pressuring the various temples to allow members of their organization into our temple. Mm-hmm. It seems like They're something after is me. Why they At least you? partially. Oh, because you've escaped. Mm, the blade. Which one? Both. You've gotten the life blade? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure that wasn't easy. It's a long story. As you, you make your way over to her? Mm-hmm. She goes ahead and reaches a yeah. hand out to you, kind of resting a, a hand on your shoulder and cast heal on you, and you gain 70 hit points. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what can we do? Mm-hmm. I don't mean to put you in this position, I. but if you know anyone else that can help, I could go to them too. No, I don't know who we can trust in this moment. Uh, I've spoken with Citrin. Um, I understand that he had ensured your access to the, the gala that is in a few days to try and recruit allies. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Inquisition will be there also. Yeah, and I don't really see how we're going to a gala when we're in prison. Yes, well, I wonder. Why don't we get some rest for the evening? But... Are you capable of performing many spells left? Um... I've got a handful. I don't see how much use you're going to be. But what if they get tortured while I'm here? What if they get blamed for me leaving? Well, I guess we should put on our best disguises then. Do what? You want to get knock on the now? door? We can try and knock, get knock. now. Like pretending to be who? We'll sneak in. Not the stealthiest, but <laughs> we can certainly try. Unless you have an idea. Can I take a short rest first? Yes, go go rest. It's... Short one. Because then I could be uh, animals again. Okay. If that's what you feel would help. Help me get here. Go rest, Whisper. Take a moment. I'll, uh, I'll get us some cloaks to at least cover us a little bit. Okay. Okay. With that, 
you make your way. You gather yourself up, getting a bit of a rest. While you're resting, yeah. while you're resting, uh, Clover and Gormrug, what would you two like to do as Whisper makes her escape? Not doing anything. I'm playing dumb. I'm cooperating. Um, at 16 hit points. Um, almost out of key points. I'm. I'm not trying to stir the pot any more than it already is. Okay. So. Um, with that, um, okay. Um, as you two are in this cell still, um, the guards are kind of yelling at you, asking where she goes, and for the most part, you're able to avoid any further harm to yourselves um, before they eventually post more guards down here to keep an eye on you, but leave you alone for the rest of the evening. Um, so if you'd like to go ahead and take another rest, just rest in general, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying for a long rest. Close my eyes. Okay. All right. Well, the three of us good to take a long rest? We'll see. Mm-hmm. Sir, can I push the button? <laughs> <laughs> Whisper, as your short rest comes to an end, you gather up with uh, uh, Pike as she dons, uh, pre- presents a set of black cloaks for you, the pair of you. Are you ready? Mm, do we have a plan? sneak in and try and rescue your friends? I don't know. I'm just never very good at plans. Uh, so, the the cell was kind of like in the middle of the keep. Okay. You um, feel like you can guide us there? Probably. But there's so many guards. Well. Are, are we just pretending to be somebody else? Or are we pretending, trying to be sneaky? I don't think sneaky works for you. And I look at her armor. She kind of lifts up both of her arms. That's fair. Um, I was thinking maybe I'd call us a friend. Okay, I like friends. All right, I'm going to need some time. Um, that's, that's fine. She begins casting a spell, basically in the center of this, this space. Um, And as time ticks by, you see in the space she calls this blue-skinned, large figure begin to take shape as a pair of celestial wings form out behind them. And she summons a angel to assist you all. I mean, at least he can help me fly in. Maybe cause a distraction? Oh. Yeah, that is very distracting. <laughs> uh. take, take it easy, Whisper. Yeah, it is. Uh. Uh, okay. So are we just going balls to the wall in? I mean, that's usually what I'm Tear down about. the walls. Okay. Would you like me to call I really wish else? Talon was with me. I mean... I don't have the ability to... I could call somebody on a whole other... No, I can't. I don't even have my bag. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we could use all the help we can get if you have anybody. Uh, I'm Cit- trying to feel confident here. I mean, if you trust him, I just figured he saw us get taken away and he gave us a nod, and I didn't know what that nod meant. If he was going to come back and help us, and his place is really far, and I just think you're more helpful. But, I mean, if he'll help us now, I don't know if he'll go against 
people openly like you do. Well, worst we can do is try. It's true. Um, question. Answer. Out of game question. Where okay. is, where is Alan? Uh, on the airship. And the airship went to Sitchin's place. No, you didn't move yet. It was waiting for you. Oh. Also, how Citrin, far is Citrin said he was waiting for you at the airship. Mm -hmm. Oh, how mm -hmm. far is the airship from? Uh, it's in the quad, right so now. it's about a 15, 20 minute walk. Can we make a stop first? Sure. Or, or if you can talk to Citrin, tell Citrin to meet us here. Okay. Okay, and and tell him to bring a griffin. Okay. Uh, she turns over to the pastor. Can you send a, a message to the the wing commander, uh, Lord Commander uh, Citrin, and have him meet us here with uh, Whispers Griffin? Yes, Lady Pike. You hear him mutter a few words before uh, seeming to receive some message back. And within about five to ten minutes, you hear the heavy flapping of wings outside before the door is burst open as the three dawn uh, platinum guard uh, the platinum there's too many names here too many names <laughs> <laughs> uh, the three members of the platinum guard you're familiar with Citrin and the two others uh, enter in yo we were coming up with a plan to rescue all you all oh that's what we were doing too but you brought you brought him you brought him and I'm looking like around him. You hear, you, as you say that, you hear you see uh, Talon kind of crawl like almost clawing oh. on the wood to get inside, and his head pokes in through the door. I run out to get him and hug him. I'm never leaving without you again. <laughs> All right. You ready to fuck shit up, Talon? So shall we? What's the plan here? Fuck shit up. Are we going to make an attempt to rescue Finnick? Uh, who should be first? Do you think Finnick is being tortured? Because I think the ones in prison right now might be being tortured. Yes, but depending on who we rescue first, it will make the other much more difficult. Uh... Well, if we rescue the others, we'll have more people. Fair. I don't know how much danger Who's more Finnick powerful? Is I don't know Phoenix parents. I don't either. Well, I know them, but I don't know their intentions for their daughter in this moment. Do you think they're more powerful than all of the guard inquisitors people? I'm not particularly concerned about the Dawn Riders. This is the Dawn Riders encampment that you've described, not the Inquisitors, so. Oh. Well, the Grand Inquisitor dude is there, the one who's not an old guy. Well, he is powerful from what I've gathered, the intelligence I've gathered, but. It's what but one man against us. Okay. So, do you think we should start with a uh, prison break? I feel like that's sound. I'm not used to making the decisions here. It's time to step up, Whisper. I'd rather not. <laughs> well, then let's rescue your friends and have them step up. Okay, that sounds like a better <laughs> idea. Iconic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we should we sneak you? Should we fly? We fly to the keep and just fly in guns blazing or yeah there are think, guns in this world guns blazing i think us moving as fast as possible is the best bet before we are overwhelmed by too many of them correct yeah um how about me and lady pike will create a distraction with her angel friend while you that and one? 
my two riders enter into the cell and rescue your friends. Okay, but with the distraction, are you going to jump in and fight when I am downed or something? We'll make sure you, likely you and your friends are able to escape. Okay. As long as you're not just, like, distracting and then dipping. I have no loyalty to the Dawn Riders. Okay, good. Good. You. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do this. Chop, chop. With that, and you all head out into the night. Oh wait, yeah. you got any snacks first? Uh, yeah, <laughs> for for you or? <laughs> yeah, I believe Talon's probably been fed. You've been fed, right? You've been fed. I I haven't eaten in it seems like ten days. <laughs> I I think I have a, a bit of bread. <laughs> that I have in my pack. Okay, I'll, I will actually have anything right now, so. <laughs> okay, kind of pulls out this, it's a st old stale. stale piece of bread he kind of hands it's over to you. Hard. Yeah, rock, yeah. Uh, you could knock someone out with that. Whatever. This. My fangy <laughs> teeth can, can handle it, so. All uh, right, let's go. All right, with that, the three Dawn Rider, uh, Platinum Guard uh, mount up to their wyverns. You hop up onto uh, Talon's back, and Pike is wrapped, grabbed around the waist by the angel as the, all of you <laughs> launch off into the air towards the Dawn Rider's Keep. Finnick. Oh. Yes. As. Care chaos. <laughs> As you are, you went to sleep, I forget. Uh, yeah, I was sitting next to the door when I was Eventually asleep. Oh, dozed off to sleep, correct. But it's a very light sleep. Right. It's so paranoia, I will say, but... you are eventually woken up as the sounds of the keep begin to grow louder. As you hear word of prisoners escaping and the... The a general entire keep begins to come alive with activity as people are running back and forth. Um, part of me wants to see if any of my clothes that are like in like the wardrobe still fit. I want to try and like make myself blend in. Okay. If I were to leave the room. Okay. Um. I mean, that's going to be up to you, whether they fit or not. Oh, she's... She's buff now, so... Oh, shit. Well, yeah. Uh, I feel like I should roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just flat D20. 15. I'll, uh, they're a little tight, but they fit. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, as you get up and, and kind of go through your new your wardrobe, uh, you are able to see outside and you see the grounds kind of being illuminated with firelight as um, people are moving all about like a like an ant hill that's been poked, and you see this uh, activity erupting across the grounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I grab a cloak, just a cloak out of the closet as well. Um, so I would like to I'll put that on. I'm gonna sneak out the door I'm going to try to sneak I will say as you go to open the door it is locked well because I locked it when I came in so right. I wasn't sure there is it is also as you unlock it it is also locked on the outside um is this window made of glass for James yes, it is there's no bars on the window no there is not cool mm -hmm. thank you Joe so now I, I will wardrobe through the window. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Actually, back to yay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I I still have a dagger on me, so I'm going to actually no. You know what? I'll bust the window with my elbow. Okay, and then. 
I will... This kind of sucks because it only lasts for one minute, but I will use the Radiant Soul and give myself those incorporeal wings. Uh, Which wings? Your fire wings, right? Yeah. Okay. Still have those, right? Yeah, you still have your fire wings. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I'll use that and I'm going to can't really be stealthy about this, but I'm going to just try and find the source of the commotion. I'm gonna jump out the window and just, I have a flying speed of 30 feet. Okay. As you shatter the window, you hear the voice that was uh, out, just outside your door instantly begin to, you hear the, the door starting to unlock as you launch yourself out, your wings <laughs> exploding like a beacon in the sky. As they open the door, I sort of like flip over on my back and I'll just shoot a fire bolt at them. Okay, go ahead and roll attack. That's going to be a 27. That'll definitely hit. Roll damage. Cool. And with my radiant soul i can also add a so add a d100 that's, of damage <laughs> explosion damage and i roll it too okay this is just gonna have to work uh 15 plus so 15 fire damage plus nine points of radiant uh as you the flame fires forward and explodes into his face you see him lurch back screaming as his entire head is engulfed in flames and you hear him screaming for a moment before he goes silent. Good. Then I flip well, back over. Because the thing is, I don't... I don't know if I know where the prison is. You're I, fired. I mean, you know where the prison is. You've been on... You lived, You grew up here. You know that where the, the cells okay. are. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't know that your friends are on it, but... Yeah, so... I am going to... with as much speed as I can um, get as close as I can but then I also kind of want to drop down on like a rooftop and try and stay hidden I mean you're you're glowing with fire so you get this I know that. but when my wings end <laughs> okay <laughs> um, before how long that does it happens, last how long does it last Finnick a minute okay um, I will say before it ends, Whisper, as you are all on approach to the the temple, you see suddenly this explosion of fire out of a window where a firebolt streaks in, and then the flames kind of lower down onto a building and disappear. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> that looks like That's us. suspicious. That maybe we're not the only one. Well, I don't know if they can hear me. We're probably like flying fast and it's really loud. So I'll just whisper to Talon. And I was like, maybe we're not the only ones trying to do this. Hopefully not. <laughs> but we stay on course. Okay. Yeah. As you begin to come in, Finnick, uh, do you have dark vision? Yes. Okay. What's the, what's 60 the range? Feet. 60 feet. I'll say you hear it before you see it. Um, you see the, f uh, you hear the faint flapping of wings in the distance, familiar to you now as you've heard it quite a few times, the sound of the Platinum Guard making their way overhead. About fucking time. And as they begin to make their way over the walls, you see the faint reflections of fire against their Platinum Armor. As in fire is heading towards them? No, like it's you see the flames, oh. the torches reflecting against their armor. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Um, I want to try and get a visual on friends. On who? On friends. Clover, uh, Gormrog, roll, Tristan. Roll a perception check for me. Oh God, no! Fuck me. Okay, that's a seventeen. 
Okay. okay. 17. So. Um, I will say you can't see your friends because they are down in the cells, um, but you do mm. you do have a visual on where this prison block is now. Okay. Um, I will say it's at this point. Uh, whisper, Pike being carried kind of flies up next to you, and you see her just tap the hands of the av- the planetar, and just is released. You see her like a rocket <laughs> slam down to the ground. And uh, Finnick, you see this now too, as the cl- her black cloak kind of floats up. You see that golden armor kind of shining brightly underneath it. Like a meteor, she slams down to the ground. And you see Iconic. in her hand that glowing mace kind of begin to illuminate. And she begins to make her way over towards the nearest guard that's running towards her. She begins to swing it above her head and slam into the chest of the closest one. Um, you see two of the wyverns kind of fly down and land on top of the prison with, in, close to you. And you see the other one kind of beginning to strafe along the walls, its tail just kind of whipping back and forth across the people. Cool. Um, are any of the guards like turning towards them? Like this, this is def- they're definitely distracted by this, right? A hundred percent. Everyone's attention <laughs> is now being actively pulled towards the giant. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the really small glowing person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. Um, I'm gonna try and sneak down to the prison. Okay. Uh, roll stealth check for me. I'm going to say it's at advantage because everyone's being distracted, but we'll just see if anyone kind of comes towards you. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's an 18. Okay. You feel pretty good about yourself as you make your way, <laughs> make your way down the, uh, the building and begin to make your way over towards where the prison is. Uh, Whisper, what are you doing? I'm going to the prison with the other two not citron people. Okay. Uh, well, they landed on top. Where are you going to land? Mm. On top of the building where the prison is? Yeah. Well, on the ground, is there a bunch of people? I mean, there's there's people all about. So if you land on the ground, yeah. Talon would be at risk of being attacked. Okay. But you're going well, to have to check to get leave. off the, seat, the roof. Did I? Am I dumb? I might be dumb. Okay, we're all a little dumb. Yeah, I'm dumb. Okay. (sighs) Because I have something that could help me, but I took it off and it's in my bag. So, (laughs) oh, yeah. Because I was like, I'm not going to need that. You put it on. I don't have my bag. Oh, it's. Yeah. Prison. And it requires attunement. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I will land with the others. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so Talon kind of <laughs> lands on top of the the the, uh, the prison building. Uh, Gormrog and Clover, you hear this eruption of noise going on outside, and you hear uh, the, the roof of the building suddenly slammed by three large uh, impacts. What do you guys want to do? I'd say it's been a few hours, so we probably got a short rest by now. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just gonna look at one of the guards and say, I think you got a bird problem. <laughs> kind of looks at you, shut up. You see him grab his spear and get prepared, pointing towards the, the staircase that leads down. Uh, Finnick. As you approach the building, you see two wyverns with their uh, platinum-dressed armor with two riders dismounting and descending towards the ground before you see a third body dismounting off a familiar griffin and beginning to make her way down from the the roof as well. Uh, Whisper, go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw for me as you jump down. Mm -hmm. Can I try and catch her? (laughs) Sure, go ahead and roll with advantage. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, What check would this be? Uh, 
just give her an advantage check. Uh, 14. Yeah, Rachel, actually, roll a strength check for me. See if you can keep gather the impact. Okay. That's so a natural buff. 20. Okay, Hell Whisper, yeah. you... Uh, For a total of 25. All right. Or no, sorry, 22. Whisper, you 22. jump off, and you feel like you're not going to land right, but suddenly you feel your arm, your your body is impacted as this soft pillow of arms catches you, and you look and turn, you see your ally Finnick there holding you. Oh, I'm glad I didn't save you first. <laughs> <laughs> Long time no see. <laughs> Come here often. <laughs> you can put me down now. Let's, let's fuck shit up. Okay, I'll, I'll set her down, and then I'm gonna cast guidance. Okay. On whisper. Okay. Mm. So you can add a D4 to your next ability check. Um, everything. How... Oh, ability. No, it's just ability check. How are you feeling? Did you rest? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> Not very well, though. How How is your health feeling? Health? I'm, I'm feeling good. Magic-wise, okay. not so great, but... Same. <laughs> uh, we just busted in here? What uh, was your plan? <laughs> with that, the two Platinum Guards uh, make their way into the prisons, and you hear them engaging in combat inside. Uh, Look, I whisper and I go... Follow them? About it. Well, Go ahead, Glover. What's going on with Tristan right now? He has been he got down. He's been sleeping all day. Is he hearing this too? Um, yeah, does he get a rest? Uh, he's been out all I mean, day. He's, he's been, been out for a while. Sleepy. He's been out for a while. He's... Tristan, go ahead and roll a perception check for me at disadvantage. He's got a long rest because he's been napping this oh whole time. <laughs> I swear to God on my life, I'm doing two 19s. Hell yeah. Uh, Tristan. I swear to yeah. Tristan. Plus, but yeah. Go ahead and give yourself a full rest. Yes. The only one. Yeah. I, I always forget how to get rid the of The only long clothes. rest. That's fine. That's fine. It's about to tank this whole fight. Let's go. Uh, with that, Tristan, you will hear this commotion going on outside and you see the guard standing in front of your cell. You see Gormrog and Clover just as bloody and bruised as when you were all captured earlier. I, I'm trying to get rid of the saving throw thing and it won't go away. Don't worry about it for right now. Okay. Just give yourself a fall rest. Uh, oh, okay. Um, but Tristan, you slowly rise to your feet now. No idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> He's just vibing. Instantly, instantly, just going, going from the last moment in his mind, going in, he going to a complete rage. Okay. It's the, uh, go ahead and roll for your wild magic. No, oh, because I didn't have any of my stuff set up. Because I didn't know what was going to happen. Just glad you're awake now, buddy. <laughs> yeah, ditto. Good call, Taz. Eight. A bullet lightning shoots from your chest. Another creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you must succeed on the constitution saving throw or take 1d6 radiant damage and be blinded until the start of your next turn. Until your rage ends, you can use this effect again on each of your turns as a bonus action. Okay. Well, that uh, one a lot. Yeah, you get that one a lot. I was hoping you get the it's teleportation really the, one. So was I, the one I usually <laughs> don't want to get. Uh, okay, do you want to direct your lightning at anybody? All right, can, any guards that are down there? The, the guy who just, uh, I don't know it, but the guy who pulled his spirit out, is he? There is a guard uh, standing in front of your cell with a uh, pike kind of aimed up towards the stairs that it's, it's gonna go to him. All right, go ahead and uh, what's he got to roll? Uh, country saving throw. All right, it, he rolled a seven, so. Okay, so he takes 1d6 radiant damage. Uh, so that's two, two radiant damage. Okay, 
So your lightning inside the cell just explodes outwards. You see electricity crackle between the bars as it pushes through. You see his. Um, you see him drop his pike and grab his eyes and uh, whisper in Finnick, you see a burst of light from the staircase across the room from you. That's concerning. So when that, how that happens is when when he Tristan wakes up, he just looks around. And he he he's still in his fight, his last thought before he went passed out and goes to a rage in that raid. That his all of his scales and his eyes and everything go burning like he kind of glows for a second before that radiant burst pops out out of in a rent. And for him, it was a random area, just before him realizing where where he sat and what's happening. All right, uh, Clover and Gormak, anything you want to do in this moment? Am I, I still like poisoned? To no. unlock my cage with my long claw, claw nails. Go ahead and make a lock yeah, check. Yeah, you do. Okay. Like a sleight of hand? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Make a sleight of hand check. Oh, yeah. Lost 18 million. plus 8. Yeah. Let's there you go. go. All right. Suddenly, as he's tr this... Tristan is now awoken and just starts to rage inside of his cell, lightning exploding out from him. You take this moment, reach your fingers out, and using your deft uh, and articulate fingers, you're able to pop that lock and drop it, and the <laughs> gate kind of <laughs> opens up as the guard is clutching, uh, bent over, clutching his eyes. Am I able to... I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to unlock Gormrog's door. Sure. Gormrog, anything you want to do before that happens? Uh no, I just needed to make sure that I wasn't still poisoned. Okay. Um Alright, uh Whisper and Finnick, anything you want to do after that flash of light? The uh two Run platinum in. the two platinum guards are engaging with the the Dawn Riders. So you're gonna make your way downstairs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The pair of you start to make your way downstairs. Tristan, what do you want to do in this moment? Uh, so what, what just happened? What, which stores did she just open again? I was looking through my notes. Uh, Clover opened up her cell. Her cell and then went to go to Gormrog's cell. cell. You're not. At, you're still in the cell. Yeah, I, I know. No, I'm saying on. she went to go to Gorm, try to see if she's going to like Gormrog's cell. That's what. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, are, I'm not. Sorry, are we in battle or is it just? It's just a loose oh, yeah. rotation. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm going to immediately go. Um, my door is still closed, right? Yeah. Can I try to, like, literally? I don't know how strong. Well, I'm, it's, it's, they're not amateur. Hey, I don't see if hey. he's ripped and broken. You can certainly I'm try. try. I'm going to try. Tristan's going to go up to his cage. That's what he would do. He's in a rate. Tristan's going to go up to the door and he's going to try to literally just rip it off the hinges. All right. Uh, make an athletics check. It's at advantage because you are raging. Okay. Wow, two nineteen and then two tens. Uh, what, what was that again? Which Athletic. one? Athletics. Athletics. So fourteen. Okay. Um, you grip and uh, attempt to rip the doors, uh, the cell doors apart, but they're a little bit too strong for you right now. Okay. Uh, Clover, you can go ahead and try and make your lockpick check again. This one is a 19, 18, 18. Okay, you are able to pop his lock as well. You get our stuff, I'll get Tristan. On it. Okay, Gormog makes his way over towards your gear. Um, the guard, as the his blindness wears off, he's going to go ahead and pick up his pike. Uh, and he's going to turn towards you, Clover, being out of your cell and, and right next to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, okay. He's going to go ahead and make an attack against you. Let's go. Uh, that is a 10. That does not hit. So he goes ahead and shoves the pike in your direction, but uh, you easily are able to dodge out of the way. Uh, Whisper and Finnick, you're coming down the stairs now. You mm -hmm. see, as you come down the stairs, you see Clover... Uh, being attacked by a guard as she's now out of her cell. You see Tristan like crackling with his electricity, electric energy. Um, Copycat. And you see Gormrug uh, <laughs> making his way over towards the back of the room to gather the, your gear. What do you guys want to do? Um, 
point of note, I'm also looking for the gear of the people in the the three people in that one cell. Okay. I will. I'm gonna run up to the guard, and is he wearing metal armor? Yes. Oh. So I have advantage on this attack. God, I need to get dice I can actually read. Um, that's going to be a twenty-four. That definitely hits. What are you doing? I'm casting Shocking Grass. Okay. Um, so he takes 12 points of lightning damage and can't take reaction. Uh, I will say he can't take reactions anyways. As you reach out behind, coming running up behind him, you reach both hands out and press against the metal armor and you see electricity <laughs> explode around. Uh, and as it arcs from his metal armor, it arcs against the bars of the prison. You see it like a... Uh, Tesla coil just explode in lightning around you all. Uh, it also connects with Tristan's energy and like arcs forward and hits him again in the side as you're drawing all that energy into this moment. You see sm as you're gripping onto him, you see the smoke kind of begin to pour out from his collar as his inside is being burned from the uh, heat of the electricity. And as you release, his whole body just slumps down in front of Clover. Anything you want to do, Whisper? I'm going to run to the staff. Okay. Uh, you and Gormrog make your way over and start gathering up all your gear. Um, looking through it, Gormrog, you don't see anything that would be of any worth that these people seem to have had that are in the cell. Seems you just... No weapons or armor or anything? No, nah, they didn't, they're just kind of um, people that Regular upset, people. upset somebody oh, in the street and were in prison at some point. All right, I'm getting Tristan his sword, I'm getting Clover her crossbow and tools. Um, I'm helping throw the things to people. Like, let's let's get uh, Finnick the bag of holding and uh, oh, yeah. the armor Hi. and everything else. And um, as I hand that to her, I'm going to give her a kiss on the cheek and just be like, it is so good to see you. As well, as you do that, I'm going to use my healing hands and we get nine hit points. Ooh. <laughs> With that, as you all kind of rearm yourselves, gathering your weapons, you all turn as you cinch down the last bits of uh, extra bits of things you need for your form. You all kind of turn and look towards the stairs giving this perfect little hero pose moment as the Fists of Fate regather once more. Two random others. Well, they're upstairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I unlock Tristan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Get Sorry. I forgot you didn't do that yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, that was that was another 18. Right. I trusted Clover's ability. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all just okay. assumed it. Yeah, out. Clover had it. <laughs> So, um, when that's all happening, when he find when Tristan is, he's kind of coming into where it's not sure what's happening. When he sees Clover opening the door, he just, he stops and there's a small sigh where his eyes go back to normal for just a, a slight second. And he, he gives like a, a small smile and sigh and then looks forward and see what's happening and then steps back into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna notice that. I'm gonna be like, stay mad. And then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna kiss Whisper out. on the cheek so she doesn't feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> With that, the whole team of the fists turn and begin to make their way up the stairs. Bursting out onto the top floor, you see the two platinum uh, two platinum guard members fighting off the, the Dawn Riders. You see them a bit more bloody and bruised than when you left them, Finnick and Whisper. But we don't even need to roll for it. As you all come out and easily overwhelm the other two, the two Dawn Riders. You okay. overtake them. Clover, you firing a bolt right through the neck of one. Tristan's bisecting another in half. You make your way out onto the, in back, out into the main uh, courtyard of the keep grounds. Uh, and as, Whisper, as you come out, Talon quickly jumps down off the building, landing next to you, and you see his wings flare out and kind of takes this aggressive stance next to you. 
Uh, in the distance, you see all of you see Pike kind of glowing as she is blasting uh, divine energy across the field, like evap uh, eviscerating several of the guards with each move. And uh, as you kind of come up from the cells, you see her notice you and start to move in your direction, batting people off as, as she comes. Shall we get going? Yes, please. Uh, very well. You see her kind of motion, and those of you that haven't seen it yet, this large blue humanoid with these massive angel wings lands down behind Pike, wraps both arms around her, her, uh, her, and just launches up into the air. What about so us? <laughs> uh, the two dorm riders. Is on fire before we leave? Nope. I don't see why not. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Um, I'm just gonna look at the others. Would it be bad to steal their wyverns? Well, they're they're outside. Can you ride? You <laughs> hey, you want to give us a lift? <laughs> that was the plan. Maybe fucking communicate that as I start yeah. running towards the dragon. The kind of uh, motions and their wyverns jump off the, the building, kind of landing on either side of your party now as the two riders quickly mount up. Uh, you see their massive wings, and all of you are in the space of these wings, and they have to just barely dodge over you as this massive wind pressure pushes down on you, and the, the two wyverns lift up, uh, reaching their claws out to grab hold of who? Well, we can't no, ride on their backs. Us are. Not enough room on the back. Oh, and Whisper's got stuck. Talon. Yep. Yeah. Can yeah, both Clover guess. and Whisper fit on Talon? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Oh, and then there's three Wyverns, so then they can get me or Morgan. Just... Okay. So the three? first, the first two. Oh, because there's Citrin and then the two others. Grabbing hold of uh, Euphonic and you, Gormrog, leaving just Tristan there standing in the field for a moment. Uh, as the guards begin to move towards you, Tristan, um, you stand there alone now, prepared to battle off this army moving towards you before suddenly your back is impacted as another set of claws wrap around your, your shoulders and lift you off into the air. Tristan lightly disappointed. <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> The Lord eateth and the Lord yoinketh away. <laughs> In his mind, he was getting ready to slaughter every single one of them by himself. I was, there. I was gonna do some crossbows to the sky. <laughs> uh, you said you want to light this place on fire. Is there any plan for that? Or I mean, I have firebolt. <laughs> Just little bolts of fire everywhere. Uh, probably not enough to light the. I light a fire, few but... of Clover's uh, crossbow bolts on fire. Okay. If that works. Yeah. So Clover, as you're leaving, you, you and Finnick working together, you launch a couple bolts inside the roofs of some buildings and you see them starting to catch fire. Uh, you're not able to destroy the keep proper, but you get the sense that you're you're leaving this place a little worse than you found it. As you all begin to fly back towards Vasselheim proper. Thanks. Well, Talking about going with a blaze of glory? Something like that? That's not what that means. <laughs> well, we're not going out with a blaze of glory. We're just leaving with a blaze of glory. I'm not good with euphemisms. Metaphors. Words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> as... I just, I just look away from Gormag. I'm like, I need to stop talking. As the evening ticks on, as you're all flying back into the city, the wyverns lead you directly towards your airship. Seemingly having decided themselves that this is where you're going. Um, uh, eventually, you're all kind of dropped off on the deck of the ship as the uh, Citrin dismounts his wyvern and the other guards kind of take up uh, patrol positions flying around in case anything approaches. Um, 
Pike is also dropped off on the deck of the ship with you all as her as she instructs her uh, planner ally to return to her temple and guard it. Uh, I'm going to look at Citrin and say, your place? I uh, think that would probably be best. Yeah, I'll we're about to be hunted. Crew. Well. And uh, crew and captain and get them all uh, rallied and, and on the move now. Just okay. As you all gather up your crew the sh- and the two large crystals of the ship <laughs> hum the life as that large center one begins to hum with energy. Whisper. Mm-hmm. You feel that elemental energy course through your body as it ignites. Mm-hmm. And you don't feel it try and take over you. Hmm. Do I feel that hint of one that I felt before far, far away? Roll a perception check for me. Okay. Guidance. I know, I'm with guidance. Well, I was, I was <laughs> already guided. Oh, yeah, that's it true. Is. Yeah. Gotta find it. Perception, you said? Yep. 22. Okay, as you take a moment and reach your senses out for that vibration. You feel it still in the direction where you felt it initially, and you're able to kind of pin, uh, focus onto it. It still feels pretty far away as far as like the gauge you've kind of d- been able to gather, having done this a few times now. Mm-hmm. Still feels rather far away, but it is slightly closer than the last time you felt it. Hmm. Okay. But with that, as the ship rocks, some dirt and dust coming off the sides of the ship, lowering down to the ground. Your ship, your airship rises up into the air. It humming as it whips the bow around. And you see the two wyvern, uh, uh, the two wyverns, the three wyverns rather, uh, kind of loop around, gathering on either flank of uh, either of your flanks. And the airship <laughs> launches off northward, being directed by Citrin as you move towards the, the, the Platinum Guards Keep. And that is where we're going to call it for the night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good job, guys. Holy shit. That was a stressful episode, guys. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I wasn't even in most of it. I'm just sitting here this sorry time. I'm like, I'm like grabbing my shirt under the... Under, I'm, I'm just, oh, my God. Well, I hope you guys had fun. I hope <laughs> everyone that was watching enjoyed. Um, this was a, a good uh, little bit of everything in that episode. Yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, let's see. You can catch us on Wednesday where I get to interview Hands for the return of Investigation Check. We're going to dive into her geeky backstory. And next week we have Forging Fates. Yeah, right. Next week? Yeah. No, I think uh, next week was going to no. be Goodberry, but... Uh, Goodberry is on a temporary hiatus. But uh, next but week we is have... Queer and Present Danger. Yes. Okay. We left off on a pretty big cliffhanger last time. Okay. So we have Queer and Present Danger on Wednesday. Next week. Next week. Maybe Spell Shots on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I don't know. TBD. TBD. Should yeah. be, yeah. Uh, don't forget about the Crit Awards. We would love your nominations. Critaward.org. Uh, I've got nothing else. Any of you guys got anything else? Stick around for the raid. Nope. Love you, geeks. Good night. <laughs>